Hey guys, Jack here with another video that's completely and totally unrelated to the podcast or anything prepping or survivaling. Just to look into my personal life again, my uh, fish hobby. And I don't know how far I'm going to take this yet, but I wanted to kind of document the beginning of it uh, as we go forward. It might just be a couple bowls. It might be build out the whole rack. I don't know yet. Uh, I'm not even sure when I'm going to get to putting the bowls together, but uh, it was kind of a target of opportunity. I went to my wife with, to a place called Hobby Lobby. And uh, we were looking for some glass to do some terrariums, uh, one for a gift and, and some for her for the table. And I came across these bowls. And Hobby Lobby right now is a very dangerous place if you, uh, if you like to do anything with glass. Uh, not because the glass itself is dangerous, but the pricing is dangerous. So everything at Hobby Lobby is 50% off at the end of the year. And I didn't see anything that got my fish uh, scales going. Until we uh, we went to the other side of the store, and this might be true at your store, over like where the wedding stuff is and all, is where we found these bowls. These bowls um, are a little bit more than three and a half gallons. And there's, I didn't want to do all kinds of math to calculate that. I took a one gallon jug and filled them up, and I got about three gallons and a little bit more than a half, and it was to the top. So that told me the volume of them. And I thought, you know, there's a lot of people doing nano tanks. Uh, with three gallon cubes, and they're spending 70, 80 bucks. And I'm not going to say this is as good as like a, you know, a, a, a cube tank, especially, uh, you know, a, a higher end one or anything, but it is 10 bucks. And um, so I decided I was going to build one of these, and this mess here I'm still working on. Uh, I was going to go put this on my desk and make a beta bowl out of it. And uh, so I went online to look for a light, for a little nano light. There wouldn't be too much money. Because I wanted to like give you guys a way that are fish people, like you could do a nano tank. And I, you look at these things, and people build a $3 nano tank. And they have like $500 freaking dollars into it by the time they're done. And I just don't think that makes sense. Um, so I went and I found this like Nikru. That's a light there by a company called Nikru. I really like this light. Um, I have them over my 10 gallons over there running my shrimp. They do a really good job with low light requirement plants like Anubias, Valsneria, Java Moss. I think there's a bunch of uh, water lettuce on top of there. So I know they work. So I looked and had a scaled down version. I think this light here is like 30 bucks, something in that range. Then this little 10 inch one, and these bowls are about 12 inches to the outside. And so they have these little 10 inch ones, and uh, they're really designed to not have to actually clip on both ends. Like really you should just be able to clip on one side of a small like cube tank, and then put that thumb screw in, which is actually doing nothing right now, and uh, it'll hold. But since this bowl is round, one of the advantages of a cube, uh, if you try to tuck that in, it just turns and, and falls in. But what I realized, and this is true if you get this exact bowl. Again, this is a three and a half gallon bowl at Hobby Lobby. There's the $21.99 or whatever, 50% off. There's a skew there you can look up probably. Um, if you shove these things all the way on, and you could always, if you had to, to make it go in a little further, cut the back out of these brackets. This bracket just pops on here perfectly. And so I was going to use this, but if you look at the difference between the illumination on that bowl and the illumination on this bowl, you can see that that bigger light really throws more light. So I think this would work for a little nano setup as a standalone, uh, but I have this book rack here. And uh, this is where I previously had my 10 gallons. And what I realized, let's see if I can turn that light off, pop this thing off of here. And you can see it just pops on there perfectly like it was made for it. But two bowls fit beautifully together down there. And uh, this is me, you know, thinking, what can I do here? Well, what I did for that night crew, and I'll show you in this one instead, I just pop some plumbing strap in here. And that night crew light just snacks in there. And boom, you've got a lit shelf. You've got two three and a half gallon nano tanks. Uh, that little thing there's a little heater. I'll put a link in the video notes if you're interested in the heater I'm going to use for the first project. And I'm really not in any hurry on this, and I'm thinking about how to do this. But this could be, it could go back to being a bookshelf down low and just two tanks here. Um, or it could have two there and two down there. So I went ahead and did the plumbing strap because it took about five minutes. It's a heck of a lot easier to flip the thing over and stick the plumbing strap in there. And I just made the little brackets like this. This is called plumbing strap. If you've never seen it before, you can buy it at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's very inexpensive. And uh, since that's like a laminate wood, I drilled hole, pre-drilled and then just tacked those up there and made sure these were bent to where you could slide that light in and out. And one nice thing about this light, it doesn't have a big honking adapter, but even if it did, it wouldn't matter because 
it's got an inline plug so you can pull that out and you just got this little tail that you can fundle through wherever you want so now i got to think about this uh these are going to be planted uh, that one's going to have a heater. I may do some unheated. None of these right now do I plan to put filters into. That's another expense. It's another electrical input. And I've seen a lot of these little nano tanks done. You keep the bio load low. You do no, no filtering. And you set up an ecosystem. I've got tons of plants to work with. And uh, the less expensive this is, the easier it is as an entry level thing for somebody into the hobby. And I think the bowls are going to be cool. I do like the kind of cube effect and all, but bowl, anybody that's ever done uh, like small house construction or looked at geodesic domes knows when you go into a circle, you get a whole different way that you can utilize space. And where that hurts you in, in, in homes is generally with walls. But since you have no walls, you have all this open space. You can do a lot with a bowl. I know everything like goldfish bowls or whatever, but this is kind of a totally different thing here. So... My next thought is, you can see how that light's kind of blaring. Now, that is because I have the phone down on a lower angle than you would generally observe this from. But I really like the way the negative space works on that rack that I built over there. And uh, so I have plenty of plywood out in the shop. It would be really easy to just cut a piece of plywood and put that on the back and then just paint the whole rack and that piece of plywood black. Um, and then that would kind of close that in, create a, a, a background without painting the back of the, the tanks. Uh, and I think it would look really cool. And, you know, I could do a lot of things here. Then I could throw a 20 long will actually fit up there. Uh, two more bowls would fit up there using those little lights, the little clip-on lights, because you don't have an overhead. Uh, but what I really like about this, if you guys remember the video where I showed I had a 10-gallon in this space, what I had to do is I had to take a piece of Lexan and put a piece of Lexan down here. So when I did water changes or messed with the plantings or had to net anything out, I had to actually slide the tank out a few inches. So I could get my hand between the top here and down in here to work. Well, as you can see with these bowls, they're a lot lower than a 10-gallon tank. So I have plenty of workspace. And I think we got these um, these shelves on like Wayfair or something like that back when we moved in the house. But uh, they weren't real expensive. So you could set up a really cool setup for not a lot of money. Again, I don't know that I'm going to go that far with it. We'll see. I kind of want to see how these first ones come out. I've, I've got two 10s to build for the bottom of that system before I do. Uh, so I, I, I don't really know, but, uh, you know, maybe this week, uh, once it warms up a little bit out in the shop, it's cold as heck right now. I might get out there and, and put a piece of plywood on the back of this and, and like I said, just paint this black. It would be a really simple, quick, easy thing to do, uh, that I think might set this off a, a heck of a lot better. Uh, the other thing that, that will let me do is matching this color, because this is like a fake stain, is going to be all but impossible. What I'd really like to have is something that comes down a little bit here like a removable panel like i did there and if it's black it's really easy to hide it and what that'll do is kind of show you if i, have, I don't really have anything to work with here now there a rag so just kind of look at the the glare of the light there and i'm going to put the, the camera down for just a second so it's going to kind of you're going to be looking at i don't know my desktop or something just for a second And as you can see, that focuses that light, and it prevents it from being as glaring. And uh, again, since that wall is a light color paint behind there, you're getting a lot of light glare off of that. Uh, if I do all that, the other thing I'll probably do is what I did with those is up inside on the bottom where that plumbing strap is on the bottom of the shelf there, I'll just use some spray adhesive, and I'll spray some aluminum, uh, it heat, uh, glue some aluminum foil here, which will actually increase the reflection of the light downward, black in the back, you know, doesn't reflect any light at all. So it'll be pretty cool, huh, Charlie? Charlie's always jealous of the fish. What's the matter, Charlie? What's the matter, bud? Huh? Anyway, so that's a little project I'll be working on. And uh, if nothing else, it'll be a cool little... Here you can build a, a little nano tank for under 50 bucks type thing. And uh, what's going on over here? Let's give you a real quick look. Not all the tanks, but just want to show you what's happening with the red cherry shrimp. It's got an uh, oxymoron red cherries. Look at the babies. This tank, my buddy was over yesterday. He said, this is, out of all my tanks, this little tent is his favorite tank. Uh, I've got so much growth in here, I'm having to pull, uh, like, freaking uh, uh, bucket of uh, top growth of the water lettuce and the uh, salvinia and duckweed out of this uh, every week. But you see how they're all, the babies up on that particular water lettuce? If I would have done this a couple hours earlier, there would even be more of them. I found a little hack. So... 
One of the things that really triggers breeding in Neocardania shrimp is fish poop. That's what they really want more than flake food, more than, they, more than algae. They like fish poop. I got a lot of snails in here. Check that. That's a Bloody Mary grade Neocardania right there. She's pretty and she is buried too. So she will be making babies soon. Anyway, uh, I got snails and they like that too, but they really like fish poop. Now, my Manuma cichlids up here. Uh, it looks really pretty clear on the camera right there. You can see the lots of uh, suspended matter. And, and these guys are just nasty. <laughs> they really are. They're beautiful fish. They're cool. I love their personalities, but they make a mess. And water lettuce is almost like having a solids filter in your tank. You can see that like that one back there hasn't been taken out for a while. It's kind of all got a ton of that, that stuff on it. So does that one back there. This one here just came back in the tank. It's already starting to pick it up. So all of that fish poop and biofilm and everything gets on the roots of those water lettuce plants. So what I do is every couple days, I pull a couple water lettuce plants out of here, they think they're getting fed, and I drop them down here, and I pull a couple out of here and throw them back up there. And so when I do that, within about an hour, that new plant, both over here with the blues and over here with the reds, will just be covered, and especially when I've noticed more than anything else, the babies. The adults come and eat some, but the babies, like that's what baby shrimp crave is that biofilm fish poo stuff. Um, so it's just a great way to, because there's so there's starting to be so many in here, it's a great way to reintroduce it. And I don't have to put fish in here that are going to eat my baby shrimp. And I know you can do it, and I've seen a lot of people successfully breed, you know, two or three things in one tank. Most of those people, though, tend to be breeding in 20 longs. And if you think about a 20 long versus a 10 liter You've got a lot, you know, a lot more space. You've got almost basically two tens put together. Um, and that gives you a lot more space and a lot more cover and a lot more to work with. Uh, and right now I'm just trying to breed up some really strong colored cherry shrimp. And people have been asking me what my end game with this is. Since I'm into prepping and stuff like that, is this for food? These guys are, I guess they'd actually probably be good sauteed up, but nah, they're too valuable to do that with. Um, but a shrimp like, like that guy sitting there on the filter... Uh, if you go buy that at a pet store, you're looking at six to six to nine dollars, depending on what pet store you're at. Online buying them in bulk, you know, it's still like a four or five dollar shrimp. Well, my little nano fish tank down here, I'd like to have one day like a hundred shrimp in that tank hanging out with those fish. If they breed, they breed. If they don't, I don't care what I lose down there. That's a display tank. Okay, so that's six hundred to nine hundred dollars worth of shrimp. And some of these things like the uh, the fantasy blues and all I'm doing, working with, like that guy right there. I'm going to be working with green jades. You know, they're nine bucks a piece. Um, you start doing that, you can have, have like just, just in shrimp, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars worth of shrimp down there. I'm not spending that kind of money. I like this stuff. I don't want to put that kind of money into it. Uh, so I'm breeding my own. Another thing that I'm going to work on breeding, probably with one of these other tens that are going to go down here, I've got celestial pearl danios in there. Really easy to breed, but they eat their babies. So you take a trio, you bring them over here, you put them in the tank. You let them breed for a couple days, you put them back in there, you raise the babies up, feed them some fry food, get them big enough, into the tank they go. Um, you know, I may sell some stuff to some stores locally and stuff when I get to the point where I have more than I can use. Uh, but I'm not really in it for that. I'm in it because this is a hobby I enjoy. Uh, I've been off since Christmas. I'm going back to work tomorrow with the podcast. And uh, I've just been kind of playing around with stuff like this, hanging out with the wife. And uh, things are going good. So that's what's coming and uh, if you like this sort of thing, you might even like the prepping stuff I do. Check out my podcast at tspc.co. Uh, I'm going to create a playlist. I'll put a link in the, the video. So if you want to follow the playlist instead, if you're an aquarium person but you don't care about the other stuff I do. Uh, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed your holiday. I did. The shrimps did. Isn't she pretty? She's getting ready to make... Oh, she's... Look at that. She's got a big old belly full of berries. Uh, she'll, she'll drop 20 to 30 shrimplings pretty soon. Anyway, guys, we'll catch up with you later.